Hey guys, it's Uncle Doug again. I'm coming to you do another reaction video. I'm trying to work out how to do this window better. I um, This one is a song I have a problem with. It's just one of a whole bunch of songs, but we're going to talk not so much specifically about this song as about just in general some of what's out there that's wrong and why it's wrong and why you ought to be careful about it because it feeds to humanism, it feeds to self. It, it feeds this sort of entitled generation and God's here for us and he's a sugar daddy that kisses with the kisses of a hurricane and wet sloppy whatevers and stuff. It, it, it just is problematic in creating any kind of fear of the Lord, which you will have if you have a real encounter with the living God. Um, will you come out of that loving him? Yeah. Does he love you? Yeah. Uh, I, I guess my problem is when I had a, a vision of how angry God is at the church in 2004, and it set me going 200 miles an hour with, uh, an hour with my hair on fire to change things. You go back, watch, uh, I'll put it in the comments below, the link to the vision that started this crazy ride. And... I got a tremendous sense of the wrath of God, the urgency of the hour and the wrath of God. And I was, I, I didn't get the gift of tongues. I got screaming and there was no way to pray without just groaning and screaming all the time for the burden that was on me and how the urgency of the hour that's never lifted a, even a little. And, uh, I would talk to people and try to, and, 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 and sometimes cry and try to get them to see the urgency of the hour and they would say but Doug where's your joy God is love and I'm like okay Lord uh, am, I, am I too wrath heavy am I preaching the wrath too much he said you can't preach the wrath too much you can't preach the love too much either there, there are extremes way out there that are both true but there's lots of people preaching the love and hardly anybody preaching the wrath. And there's got to be balance. And if we're all we're ever singing is songs about how much he wants to kiss us and love us and how he's going to uphold us and how he's jealous for us because we're so special to him. Uh, where I don't think we're preaching the wrath. I don't think we're urging people to repent or calling them. Uh, it's, it's the exact opposite of sinners in the hands of an angry God which is the most published sermon in history. People uh, grabbed a hold of the pew in front of them, screaming because they could see hell opening up under their feet. And it changed lives. I'm not sure that I'm seeing a lot of lives changed, but he really, really loves me. He's never gonna fail me. He never, it's, he's never gonna quit. He's, he's, it's almost like we're talking ourselves up into the idea that he's not going to abandon us like our dad did or our mom did or our boyfriend did or whatever else. Anyway, so I'm not going to play this song. I'm just going to read you the lyrics, okay, so that we can just talk through them together. If you hear crunching in the background, it's the little dog over there. <laughs> this is uh, Your Love Never Fails by Jesus Culture. Um, nothing can separate, even if I ran away, your love never fails. The prodigal son ran away, and he was separated. You can go too far. You can run away from him. He is not obligated to chase you. The father waited. He didn't chase the son into the foreign land, loving him all the time, making sure he was fed while he was wasting the money and slopping the pigs. The father stayed home, and the kid moved. So you can run away, and he will stand back there where he's supposed to be and love you and wait for you to get your head on straight and come back. I know I still make mistakes, but you have new mercies for me every day. Your love never fails. Doesn't that seem to work counter to I need to quit doing this stuff? I need to repent and get right and turn from my wicked ways. You stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes and maybe pain in the night but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid because I know that you love me, your love never fails. So there's nothing in here about we, what we need to do for him, just that he's going to love us no matter what we do. The wind is strong and the water's deep. 
I'm not alone in these open seas because your love never fails. The chasm is far too wide. I never thought I'd reach the other side because your love never fails. Because you stay the same through the ages, your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. So we're repeating now. When the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid because I know that you love me. Oh no, love never fails. And then we just repeat stuff over and over and over. There's essentially like four life, four sentences of content in this thing. And a couple of them are just flat wrong and the others are just about all about us. And then we start repeating stuff. Because you make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. Because you stay... Because you stay the same through the ages, your love never changes. It may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid because I know that you love me. Love never fails. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make, you make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good because you make all things work together for my good. Because you stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. It may be a pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid because I know that you love me. Never fails. I get frustrated with endless hypnotic repeating songs that play to emotionality that get people worked up into a hype and they don't even necessarily pay attention to what they're singing or whether it's glorifying him it, it, there's a lot of things you can say to God but when we say to another person you know he makes all things work to the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose it's, a, it's an encouragement to the person. It's not a worship to the Lord. It's not praise of him. Yeah, okay, he's going to find a way. It's also not a promise to everybody. He makes all things work together for the good of them that, are, that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Mm, that's not necessarily everybody. If you ran away, like the prodigal son... I don't think you have a promise that automatically you can assume there is no way other than that it will work together for your good. You could not come home. You could not go back to the Father and say you're sorry. And yeah, he'll put a robe on you and a ring on your finger. But it doesn't have to be that way. You could die with the pigs. They could eat you. You could, whatever, sell yourself to the guys that took all your money before. There's all kind of ways. You don't come home. It works to the good when you submit to him, love him, and he turns it to a good purpose. That prodigal son was a better son when he came back than when he left. But if it had never come back, which was a possibility, it wouldn't have worked to his good. Because he didn't love the Lord. He didn't love his dad enough to submit and see that his dad was good. And that it would be better to be there doing whatever, whatever dad told him. Now... This song is not as long as others. It's not even as repetitive as others. It's not even as much about us as others that are out there. But I want you to be sensitive to what you're singing and whether or not what you're singing is all about you. And whether or not the words coming out of your mouth are true. I get irritated when, when people sing and they stand up in church raising their hands. We all fall down. We lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. And they always sing it standing up. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're going to fall down and you're going to lay your crowns at the feet of Jesus. But right now you're just standing there as big and big and loud and proud and joyful as you can be with your chin up in the air, not broken, not repentant, not humble, not really laying anything down. <laughs> uh, maybe you ought to hit your knees when you say you're on your knees. Uh, whatever. Anyway. Uh, just a quickie comment. Uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say about it down in the comments. Please, uh, if, if there's anything valuable here, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. we got 1,700-some videos right now. 
and uh, been uh, 20 years almost now feeding the hungry and clothing the naked and caring for people and trying to do church in a different way and and call out what's what as we see it and uh, not trying to be insulting, not trying to be hurtful, uh, just trying to get us back to the real Jesus. And he is holy and uh, if you were... Um, I, I, if you're, I am somebody that met Jesus. I know lots of other people that met Jesus in person, real full on Christophany. You don't have to believe me. I don't care if you believe me. Uh, it wasn't, I've never had a drug in my life. I'm not crazy. If you want to go watch the video, I'll put that link in the description too. Uh, when Doug met Jesus and I can tell you that that all I wanted him to go was do was go away because I was utterly, utterly aware of my blackness and his whiteness, white beyond white, holy, and I was saved, Holy Spirit baptized as un, no willful sin, walking right as I could at the time, but I was still utterly filthy compared to him, and I wanted him to go away. And I was not, uh, my only concern was that, that somehow my dirt would stick to his cleanness. And, and, and my only concern was for him. And I can tell you, every knee will bow and every tongue confess Jesus Christ is Lord because you cannot be in his presence and not know that he's Lord and that he is holy and you are not. And there will be no voice in the lake of fire in hell that shakes its fist and said, I was treated unfairly. I didn't get what I deserved. They will know. And all of these songs, I can only imagine, will I stand up? Will I? No, you will want something to crawl under and there will be nothing. I don't care how holy you are. I don't care how right you are. You will be completely aware of everything you've ever done wrong and how far you are from his holiness. And you will want something to crawl under and there will be nothing. I had my head so, eyes clenched so tight, face on the ground, head down, and I could still see him coming at me out the top of my head. He was so bright. Anyway, we can do better. We should be doing better. If we heard the Lord better, if we, if we were interested in the real effect it was going to have on people's salvation and not their entertainment, not their feelings, we would write better songs. And uh, they're out there. And uh, I'm going to show you some of those too. Some of those that should wreck you, that should change you. Anyway, thank you for listening. God bless y'all. Um, please subscribe, comment, give it a thumbs up, whatever. Uh, fellowshipofthemartyrs.com is our website. Uh, got eight books that are there free about how the church ought to be different. Um, love to have you around. Thanks. God bless y'all. In the name of Jesus. Amen.